Hello and welcome to this math tip of the week from MathTutorDVD.com. Today we're going to talk about something that you'll use in almost every math class you take and that is how to quickly and easily find the common denominator between two fractions so that you can add them or subtract them. So anytime you add or subtract two fractions, the number one rule that you need to know is that the denominator, which is the bottom number on these fractions, they must be the same. Uh, so if they're not the same, you learn when you study fractions, uh, when they're not the same, you must make them the same before you can actually add or subtract them. What we need to do is figure out a way to make the bottom number, the denominators in these fractions, the same so that we can add them. So here we have a 2 on the bottom and a 4 on the bottom. Now the other thing you need to remember about fractions, for instance, the 1 half fraction, you can do anything you want to this fraction as far as multiplication and division. You can multiply or divide the top and the bottom of this fraction by the same number. The only thing you have to remember is that you must do it to the top and also to the bottom. So for instance, what we're going to do is transform this 1 half. And we're going to do that by multiplying the bottom by 2. But if we multiply the bottom by 2, we must also multiply the top by 2. Because if we don't do it, then we're going to basically unbalance this fraction. I can multiply the top of this fraction by 100, as long as I multiply the bottom also by 100. I could multiply the top of this fraction by uh, you know, 19 if I wanted to, as long as I also multiply the bottom fraction by 19. By doing it to the top and to the bottom at the same time, you really don't change the value of the fraction. You're just changing the way it looks. That's all you're doing. So what I choose to do here, you get a little creative freedom, basically. What I choose to do here is I take the 1 half, the original fraction, and I multiply the bottom by 2. The reason I'm doing it is because I'm trying to get a denominator of 4 to match this one. When I multiply bottom by 2, I must also multiply the top by 2 to make it a legal transformation, to make it the same thing. So what I'm going to have, 1 times 2 is going to be 2 on the top. 2 times 2 is going to be 4 on the bottom. Don't forget I'm still adding 1 fourth. So now that I've transformed it, I can easily add. The denominators are the same, so I keep the denominator. I do not add the denominators, I keep them. And now I add the top. 2 plus 1 is 3. So when I do this addition, I will end up with 3 fourths of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, so here's our second guy. We have 3 fifths plus 1 tenth. Again, our goal is to find a way to make these denominators match so we can add them. Well, here I have a 5 and here I have a 10. The easiest way to do this is to multiply 5 times 2, which will be equal to 10, and then these denominators will then match. So what I'm going to do is say, well, I have 3 fifths, and I need to find a way to transform this guy. So what I'm going to do is multiply the bottom by 2, multiply the top by 2, and that's going to get me a 10, which is going to match the other fraction. So I've got 1 tenth over here. So then I do the multiplication. 3 times 2 gives me 6. On the bottom, 5 times 2 gives me 10. Again, I'm adding 1 tenth. So now, by doing this transformation here, I have a denominator of 10 and a denominator of 10. So I can add these fractions. The bottom number, the denominator, stays the same. You do not add the denominator. The top number, 6 plus 1, gives us 7. So the answer is 7 tenths. 7 tenths. Now, you should always double check when you do this. Uh, you should have learned in your classes or through our DVD series, how to simplify fractions. So you check your answer to make sure if it's fully simplified. 7 tenths is fully simplified, so there's nothing further to do. This is the answer. Okay, our next problem is 3 sixths plus 2 twelfths. So again, the first thing you do is check the denominators. I have a 6 and I have a 12. It's very easy to make this match because if I take 6 and multiply by 2, I will get 12. So let me rewrite the problem. 3 sixths, and the easiest way to do that is to multiply the bottom by 2. That's going to give me 12. But if I do that, I must also multiply the top by 2 in order to make this fraction basically equivalent, make it legal. So I'm going to add to that 2 twelfths. So then we'll do the math here. 3 times 2 gives me 6. 6 times 2 will give me 12. Don't forget I'm adding 2 twelfths. So now I have this guy to do. And when you do this transformation, when you do this multiplication here, the result, 6 twelfths, is exactly equal to what you started with, 3 sixths. And that's pretty easy to visualize. 3 out of 6 pieces of something, which is 
basically a half of a sandwich, if you're thinking about a sandwich, is exactly the same as 6 out of 12 pieces. In both cases, you're really giving away the same amount of a pizza or whatever you're talking about. This one just looks a little different so that we can get the denominators the same. So I keep the denominator. We do not add denominators. And in the numerators, we add 6 plus 2 is 8. Now this is the answer. You could circle this. Uh, and this is the correct answer. However, we always check to see if things are fully simplified. So here we have 8 twelfths. Um, we think to ourselves when we simplify, is there anything I can take and divide the top and the, and the bottom by that would simplify this fraction further? In 8 and 12, obviously you can. I can I'm going to put a little note to myself. I can divide by 4. I can divide top and bottom by 4 to simplify this fraction. Um, so what I'm going to have is 8 divided by 4 is going to give me 2. 12 divided by 4 is going to give me 3. And so the answer is 2 thirds. So this is the fully simplified answer, 2 thirds. The other answer you got, 8 twelfths, is perfectly fine. It's just usually on your exams you're going to want to simplify it. So notice here what we did. We just took the top and divided by 4. We took the bottom and divided by 4 to get the simplified form. Um, you're free to divide top and bottom by the same number just as you're free to multiply top and the bottom by the same number here. That's what I opened the lesson with. You're free to multiply and or divide any fraction by any number or anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. That's why this fraction simplification works because we're doing it to the top and also to the bottom. Okay, our next problem is two-thirds plus one-fourth. Now this one is a little bit more difficult because when we look at the bottom numbers, we have a 3 and a 4. In all of the other problems, it was pretty easy to, to just look at one of the fractions and figure out something we can multiply it by to equal the other denominator. We only had to deal with one fraction. All right, so what we need to do is take 2 thirds, and I'll extend the fraction bar, and 1 fourth, and I'll extend this fraction bar. Now don't forget, all we're trying to do is change these fractions individually using the method that we now know to make the same denominator in the end so that we can add them. Now when I look at 3 and 4, the first number that pops into my head is 12 because I know that if I take 3 and multiply it by 4, uh, I will get 12. And I know if I take 4 and multiply it by 3, I will also get 12. Now if I do this here, if I multiply by 4, I must also multiply by 4 over here in order to make this legal. I must do it to the top and also to the bottom. If I multiply by 3 here, I must also multiply by 3 in the numerator to make this legal. You must do it to the top and also to the bottom. We've multiplied by the same number here, and we've multiplied by the same number here. So everything is legal. And what we're going to have in the end is a denominator of 12. Now I chose a number 12. You could choose lots of things. The number 24 will also work. If you multiply 3 times 8, you will get 24. If you multiply 4 times 6, you would also get 24. So you have a little bit of creative freedom to use whatever number you'd like. I just chose the lowest one because that's the easiest one to work with. So what I'm going to have here, when we do the multiplication, 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. Plus 1 times 3 is 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. So now we have the same denominator. We have a 12 here. So we add them together. We keep the 12. We do not add them, we keep the 12, and we add the numerator. So 8 plus 3 gives us 11. So 11 twelfths is the answer, and we always check to see if it's fully simplified. 11 twelfths is fully simplified. I cannot divide the top or the bottom by anything to make this any simpler, so we're done. Now, notice that these two fractions here, after we did this multiplication here, 8 twelfths is what we're basically saying is exactly equivalent to 2 thirds. 3 twelfths is exactly equivalent to 1 fourth. When you multiply a fraction on top and bottom by a number, you're just going to change the way the fraction looks, but it really is representing the same amount of stuff. Okay, here we have another fraction that at first glance looks a little difficult because we have an 8 and a 6 in the denominators. And so it's not easy to just manipulate one of these to, you know, you can't multiply 8 by something to give us 6, for instance. So we have to deal with both of these fractions. And again, you have some creative license in how you choose to do it. Um, so what we're going to do is think about this for a second. What number can we choose so that I can take 8 and multiply it by something to get that number? And I can also take 6 and multiply it by something to also get that number. There are lots of different choices. The number that pops in my head is 24. Because I know if I multiply 8 times 3, I'm going to get 24. And I know if I multiply 6 times 4, I'm going to also get 24. 
But if I do this in the bottom, I must also do it in the top to keep it legal. And if I do this in the bottom, I must also do it in the top to keep it legal. So here I'm going to get 24 and 24, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. So what I'm going to have is 1 times 3 is going to give me 3 over 24 from this multiplication. And here I'm going to have 1 times 4 gives us 4. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 24 like this. So I've achieved my result. I've got 24 for both denominators. So now I just add them. On the bottom, I do not add. I just keep the denominator here. 3 plus 4 gives us 7, 7 24 So then we check to see if it's simplified. And there's nothing you can divide top and bottom by to simplify this fraction further. So we're done. Now I want to stress that you working with fractions in this way to get common denominators is something you do in basic math, but it's also something you do in algebra and pre-algebra and all the math classes that you're ever going to have. And the technique we've been using works perfectly fine no matter what the fraction looks like, even if even if the fraction has variables like we have x's here. And you'll see that in a minute. So we have 1 over 2x, uh, and here we have plus 1 over x. So x is just a number. It's something that we don't know. Um, so of course the techniques are going to work the same. So what we need to do is figure out a way to transform one or both of these fractions to give us the same common denominator. See, we need to have the same common denominator in order to add these, just like we do if it's just a pure number. So here we have 1 over 2x. So 2x is the denominator. Here we, x is the denominator. An easy way to get a denominator is just to work with this fraction and multiply it by 2, because that will give me 2x in the bottom. If I do this, I must also uh, multiply by 2 in the top. That makes this fraction transformation legal. Right? So if we do that, then what we'll have is 1 over 2x plus 1 times 2 is 2 over this multiplication is going to give us 2x. And so now we have 2x in this denominator and 2x in this other denominator. Don't worry and don't get stressed out if you see an x and an x. x just represents a number. These denominators must always match to add them. And that's all we've done. So we keep the same denominator. We don't add them. It's just like we always do with numbers. And we add the numerators. 1 plus 2 is 3. So the answer is 3 over 2x. And there's no other further way we can simplify this. I can't stress this enough that when you get into higher math and pre-algebra and beyond, um, if you see fractions that involve variables, you need to do the same thing. You have to transform the denominators to be the same in order to add or subtract them. It's the same thing as numbers. All right, this will be our final problem. And notice that we have 2 over y squared plus 1 over y. Looks pretty intimidating at first. But you just break it apart methodically. The denominator here is y squared. The denominator here is y. They do not match, so I cannot add them until I make them match. And I can do anything I want that's legal in order to make that happen. So let me rewrite this like this. Um, what can we multiply this fraction by to give a common denominator? Well, this is a y on the bottom here. So if I multiply the bottom by y, then what I'll end up getting is y squared. Because y times y, you add the exponents together and you'll get y squared. If I do that to the bottom, I must also multiply by y in the numerator to keep it legal, you see? So it doesn't matter if I'm talking about numbers, letters, or whatever. Here I've multiplied by y. If I do that, I must also multiply the top by y. So what I'm going to have here is I have my 2 over y squared. And over here, I'm adding to it this guy. 1 times y gives me y. y times y gives me y squared, because we just add the exponents. And we don't do anything different. There's nothing magical. We have the same common denominator, so we keep it in our final answer, y squared. We don't add them. And we must add the numerators. So what we have is 2 plus y. We don't know any way to simplify this. There's no way to really make the numerator any simpler. When you're adding a number to a variable, you can't combine them any more than this. You just say 2 plus y. So the numerator is 2 plus y. The denominator is y squared. I cannot stress how important it is for you to realize that working with fractions that have uh, variables, like in algebra, is exactly the same as when we work with numbers. The only thing is we just need to multiply by whatever we need to to give the denominator the same value. And then we keep the denominator and we add the numerators. So this is something that you might get into a pre-algebra class or an algebra class and, and think there are new rules that apply because these, these letters are everywhere. But in fact, the same exact rules apply from your basic math, which is your fraction math. 
So that's why algebra is sometimes hard for students because if you don't understand these basic rules from basic algebra, it seems so hard. But if you get a good foundation, then uh, those rules will carry over and you'll see that higher level math is not difficult at all.